Jingle bells, jingle bells. Oh. So this is our... <laughs> Greg has to go help Santa for the rest of the year. Everybody needs a little drummer boy. The elves need so, some a pick me up to do and, that long night. You know, let's be <laughs> honest. Uh, we do our shows that come out on Mondays. Who's going to listen to it on Christmas or New Year's Day? So pretty much, we have one show next week. I'm handling it. Stay tuned for that one. It's going to be great. And I'll be mishandling it. He'll be mishandling <laughs> it, and I'll probably see him afterwards. But so we're going to have, in the words of uh, the great. Uh, philosopher Moses Howard for duty and humanity we're going to have our <laughs> holiday episode today which means we might talk about something holiday related and it might not be Christmas Hanukkah or anything yeah. else but the one thing I've been wanting so, to we've had a lot of guests go on do you know what a pippin is go on tell me <laughs> you don't remember that from men in black oh, yeah okay. I <laughs> a pippin is an apple with the skin on the inside <laughs> Which I never even understood the joke yeah. there. but <laughs> And, you know, we have, like, guests come and they flow in the show, and they've all been awesome, and next week we'll have some awesome ones. Of course, Greg won't be here, so it won't be as good a show, but uh. the one thing I've been really wanting to talk about is, like, in the last few months, we lost my favorite Lois Lane, Phyllis Coates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we never did get to talk no, about her too much. No, because we kept saying, well, top of the, I want to be on the show. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she, I mean... From what little I've seen about her and did the research, I mean, I sent you a couple of pictures before. Yeah. She used to be like do pinups and like happy birthday stuff with the cakes and the fishnet stock. I mean, she was pretty hot stuff. And um, I have one of those movie serials she was in with Clayton Moore was in it too. And it was the what, Congo girl? What was it? Something of the Congo or jungle or girl in the jungle. I can't remember the exact name of it. Will be like but very good. Though. Be like Clayton more like when he when he went around, he would put up the Lone Ranger and he would come yeah. up with the sunglasses. <laughs> well, did you ever see Clayton Moore be a villain? He was a villain in the uh, Rocket Man serial, and he was a nasty villain with the pinstripe suit, and he was great villain because he had that great voice. And you remember, isn't wasn't the Green Hornet like like a grandson of the Lone Ranger? Nephew, I think. Nephew or something. Yeah. Did you ever listen to those Green Hornets? Yeah. Things? They're pretty awesome. cool, aren't they? Um, yeah, so, and then Phyllis Coast was actually also on an episode of Leave it to Beaver. She played a neighbor that just moved in, and I don't know, it was like some weird story where Beaver had a crush on her or something. I don't know, some weird incestuous well, it's thing. <laughs> next door. It's some of those, when you watch them now, it's like... <laughs> You know, they knew what they were doing in their writing. They were sticking stuff in there. It's like old cartoons. Yeah. Well, you know, we were. I was talking about that with a friend of mine yesterday about how they had to be so discreet and everything. And, and, and that made me think about the, the one Christmas song there. Um, and and somebody, a friend of mine, said something about he found out nutmeg is a hallucinogen. Or something. He wrote that. It's a lot. I've been using a lot with squash. <laughs> and and it made me think about, well, of course, where do you think the visions of sugar plums fairies dancing in your head came from? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, have some more hot chocolate. <laughs> you know, and everybody, they, don't, they take things out of context. I remember like a couple years ago, all oh, the whining about baby, it's cold outside. Oh, my gosh. I know. And, you know, actually, one of my friends, like Carrie Bible, she does a lot of stuff like with TCM. It's, there's a whole, if you read it, was like a husband and wife who wrote it. It's not supposed to be taken that right. way at all. I mean, newsflash, men and women like each other. I mean, you know what? <laughs> Why is it so wrong to talk about attraction? Well, and, I think you know. actually more and more, what's, it's getting me now, it, it went over our heads when we were kids, but, you know, we have the Santa Claus, and he's this old immortal who's, like, watching us every day. <laughs> When we were kids, this yeah, year, right. you, you think about that more and more. That's really weird. Well, I know I, I mentioned this once before too. Going back to the Leave It to Beaver thing, there was an episode where this kid was giving him all these gifts, pens and stupid stuff, and they found out he was like klepto. He was kind of stealing them, and the Beaver's having a talk with his mother, and and she says, "Well, you know." God can see you all the time and see you do everything. And I'm thinking, man, they try to get away with that one now, you know. And but but 
as cornball as we thought all that stuff was in the 70s and 80s, it seems like now it's almost like, geez, can we get back to a little bit of moral morality in some of these things? Because it's just now it's just everything sarcastic and I know, I'm always and, one of those people like I'll, I end up in the middle all the time I think we go too far one way then too far right, the other yeah. way and plus you know nobody gets out of life alive you gotta start taking yourself less serious right right not go like look around every day oh this is like horrible <laughs> I gotta look up that episode of Lois and Clark that no uh that Phyllis Coates was I know in. I do. Actually, I own the first two seasons. Well, she played Lois Lane's mother. Yeah. And Larson was in that. Jack Larson was in that I one, remember, too. There's actually yeah. a picture. And, you know, there's no no offense to Noel Neal. She was great, but I also think, was the reason that Phyllis Coates left because she liked the noir stuff? Because you have to remember, everybody, that the first season of Adventures of Superman was hardcore. This was like well, hardcore crime. Right. And there, there was a gap, I guess between them finding a sponsor and getting it on, because they just kind of made those things on spec, I guess. They just made them, and then they needed a sponsor. So there was like a year or so, and she had other things lined up, and that's the reason I always read, that she had other commitments. And so then they went back to Noelle Neal, who was in the movie serials. No, and she was really good. It's just yeah. like Phyllis Coates had that, that great film nerd right. to her. and the hat, and just the whole, her look was way cooler, I thought. You know, but that's like, but then the, the shows got more for kids, too, yeah. by the end. Like yeah. I said, one of the old things I like to do watching it is, you know, Chris or George Reeves used to get pounded at lunch. <laughs> and I used to try to watch it. There's a couple episodes, if you pay attention. Yeah. It's like with the Honeymooners. Yeah. There's like a couple, like, because, I mean, Cramden was, like, Jackie Gleason was a drunk, but he's a functional one. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Art Kearney wasn't, and there's a couple episodes where he just looks like... Yeah, and he's, like, talking real quiet. And... But every year I watch that, their holiday episode, and I have now the whole, the Lost episode, so they do oh, it every yeah. year, and they don't really change it much. The person, like, who comes in who knows the Nortons is different. Uh, but the first one, they had, like, a kid who was a paper boy, and he's, like, a juggler and stuff. But it's the whole thing where else got to get the potato salad, <laughs> and then uh, all these characters come in. Is that is that modern, something remade or something? No, or? I guess I have it. It's, you can find it on, like, their Christmas special. Oh, it's the Lost. But, w- but lost it's not, what they call the Lost episodes, right. the ones that were on the show. Right. But they do it every year at Christmas. Ah, okay. And then they I'll break character at the end where he comes out. Because they do the other one on the TV show where it's, like, the to the Magi, oh. where I where he gets like the Hawks' bowling ball to get Alice a gift. There's, a, oh wow, there's a great Dragnet episode, believe it or not, where this this the kid baby gun. No, not that one. There's another one where this kid steals the baby Jesus oh, yeah. from the church, and I'm like, what? <laughs> All right, kid, you know what you're up against. Ollie, Twenty years, kid. Ali is our friend because I got like this. With all these, like, old Christmas movies, all the old uh, Fleischer cartoons, like Rudolph and everything. Yeah. But it's got, like, all these TV shows with the episodes. But it's got, like, there's a real, talk of, like, a hardcore one where a kid goes missing. And it turns out, like, he got into his present. It was a beat. Yeah, yeah. I watched that one the other day. And the other kid accidentally shot him. And he takes him to the body. Yeah. And, and then it, they yeah. have that thing at the end, like, the sorrowful thing with the kid's dad the kid who died, you know, wanting him to have the present and everything. Right. Yeah, that's a weird one. He, and, uh, yeah, he, and then the father is like, I'm surprised the father didn't want to kill him, but, you know. You know, it was like a weird, it's like an idea of forgiveness and everything. Right. But did the baby Jesus end up back in the manger? Yeah, like, they found him. Yeah. Why the kid took him, I forgot why, but it was an interesting story nonetheless. Well, I found a new <laughs> one, too, on Riff Tracks, where, you know, we've heard a Christmas carol over and over and over but they do one about uh, Scrooge the Carpooler. <laughs> where they, no, you have to see this as a short. It's like about conservation. They're trying to get him to carpool to work. Wow. It's like a modern day one. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of something, too. I bought this. Uh, it was a good price, too. I think it was 10 bucks. But it's all four of the uh, 80s and 90s Batman movies. Each one has a commentary, even the Schumacher ones. So he's on there talking about how he had to change the things. And, and Tim Burton isn't really very, he's not really into the commentary thing too much, but he's got some good information. But anyway, the point is that there's a special feature on there with, um, oh God, I can't, who's the one late night guy? Uh, what, Conan? No, no, uh, the, the younger guy. 
I can't Jimmy think of his Kimmel. name. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. So Jimmy Kimmel, there's this thing called Tank Man. And and it's like he gets picked up by Batman or something in in uh in in the car and he's driving in the car. Oh my god, I'm driving with Batman and he's like and then there's there's a the, the guy that's driving the tank, he's like I don't know, he's calling himself Tank Man, and he's chasing him around. It's really funny. Well, I'll, have to, I, I'll have to show you What that I thing. heard, like, about the Schumacher thing was by the time they got, like, the fourth movie, it was all about the toys and the... Oh, yeah. The, that's why they had to change it and everything. Yeah, there was, I, a, there was a big mess I with I knew them. we were in big trouble when Mr. Freeze was singing the Cold Miser song. Right. I knew <laughs> we were in huge... So I think Clooney could have made a good Batman. You he know, he great pop Bruce up Wayne. in the Flash. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that part. I'm, I'm sure I watched that movie again a second time, the Flash movie, and I I really enjoyed it. I liked the humor, and here's what I have to say about it. And think what you want and all that. Go or, see it yourself. Don't send me any hate mail. I thought it was an okay movie. We always <laughs> lay it out for you, and you can make your own mind up. But I think what that movie did try to do was the thing that everybody was always complaining about, and it did reference the Justice League movie. It did reference the other heroes, and I think they were trying to use that as the wrap-up inclusive movie that everybody says, oh, these movies don't don't connect, and, well, they think they tried to make with, make the connection with that movie, and, and Ezra Miller did do a great job with the double role, and they had a really cool technique, too, because I watched a special feature on that, too. They had this, like, body double. These are a deep dive, man. Yeah. Well, dive. I like special... Yeah, I like commentaries and stuff. I like the story <laughs> behind. I like the... Yeah. And they had this guy, uh, a young guy, who was his double. And they had some kind of weird rig that, like, strapped around him and had, like, a camera that popped up above your head. And somehow it, it probably did something like it probably computer-generated his face. And, I mean, it's just really cool how how they worked that in and some interesting and they spent a lot of money on that movie because I mean they had to build a neighborhood in a field because there was no they were shooting in London they couldn't find any houses that looked like American streets so they built five houses I just love <laughs> and driveways when Michael, and lawns when Michael Keane's Batman showed up and he's this old hermit guy yeah that was this great crazy guy yeah. You know, it was and then, too, they tried, it was like Flashpoint or something. It was like Crisis a little bit. Right. Well, that was what they were, they were basically the Flashpoint. And then story. we even got, and again, close your ears for a minute, we got Nicolas Cage and the Spider. Right. <laughs> Which, that would have been a weird movie. I would have loved They it. could have picked a better George Reeves thing, but they, they, it is what it is. You know, and they I, probably got to go through what they can use for the footage, too. Right. And try to get everything. And that's kind of good that they're homaging the past and everything it else. It is. <clears throat> and it kind of makes sense as to why all these characters would be different. Because that's a good way to, a good umbrella to put it under. Well, they, they never said it in the Bond films. But I have this theory. And now especially, you know, sort of retcon Because the guy can't be fighting the commies. And, right. you know, they could they could still move through those movies as period pieces. Right. Which would be cool. But how do you explain the guys like... You know, modern day, and I figure now that's not his name; that's the code name for the 007 agents. Yeah. How else would you explain? One guy's like in the the sixties, right? You know, he's a balding Scotsman, and then you right. <laughs> yeah, and then I got better guy's... vitamins, right? And then the next guy is a dashing uh, English guy. The and... irony <laughs> of that too was, but I guess Timothy Dalton was supposed to play when George Lazenby did. Oh. But he thought he was, the irony was, he thought he was too young. Huh. Then he left later because he thought he was too old. Then he ended up on Doom Patrol. <laughs> yeah. That's the professor. <laughs> that, and then that, also. Yeah. That show is. I the, love. I love that show. It is the weirdest <laughs> goddamn show I've ever seen. This is like, this is going to sound, hey, it's the carnival, though. I saw, I, I heard about it, so I watched it, and I go, any show where they have an idea where there's an adventure up a donkey's ass? Right. Remember the, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Nobody. And then they're it. shrunk at the yeah. second one. Oh, yeah. They go, they go into it. And I used to love Doom Patrol and the, the metal, the metal you know, man. I love Metamorpho. Yeah. And actually, I found he's going to be in some new DC. Movie. I actually found these old '60s song, the Metamorpho song from 1966. Wow! You don't want to hear it because you be Metamorpho. He's a, <laughs> an element. <laughs> you know, he's got his underwear. There's supposed to be the four elements to call. Oh him. right! Yeah. I think he's going to be put in one of the movies that James Gunn's going to be 
putting together. And there's a lot of lot of hype about the Superman legacy that's coming oh, out. I saw the guy. I forget the guy. It looks good. But I saw the guys playing. I liked Henry Cavill, though. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, I know. That's the trouble. They keep switching things around, and that's where people get weird. It's like, can't we, can't, you know. And then I, re- you know, it's too bad they didn't use uh, the the TV flash for the movie. Because Grant Gustin, he, he would have been good. Oh, no, the only thing is, I think that last season just... It's so hard to finish it good. Yeah. Even like with Kronos, that was a good episode. I read about that whole season thing. They were ranking them. And, and yeah, they said that the ending, they tried to rush them and well, I guess put too much stuff in them or something. Is they, got, they cut it from 22 to yeah. 15. And they ticked off all Legends of Tomorrow fans because they said they were going to make a cameo. Right. And everything else. But Grant Gustin was really good. Now, I heard, I never liked Smallville. You know, I, just, I did. Well, see, I just, I never been. Maybe if I one day sit down, start from the beginning, a lot of people wanted Tom Weller to play him. I'll tell you, if you really want, I mean, I know you don't want to skip around, but the third season is really good. Oh, see, the, confession, I skipped around to see Doomsday, Dark Side, all yeah, that. The third season of the Smallville is is the darker, m- little more intense season, but the first two are good, especially when the you know his beginnings and stuff. I like that show. I mean, to go ten years is a major deal. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I thought they were going to turn it into Metropolis, yeah. which maybe they have with Superman and Lois. Which, but I, but I mean, it was just to go ten years with a superhero show like that. But I liked Krypton. Yeah, Krypton you was like good. Krypton. I, I watched like three and or they, four they episodes. They have Strange in it and everything. Yeah. They have Doomsday in the second year. It was on Sci-Fi. I don't know if it still it's is. Not, it was on Sci-Fi. It's all. I think they just. Only yeah, I need them. to go maybe buy those because I. I watched the first three or four episodes, and I really so liked it. I'll get them when they're cheap. But I finally saw Last Voyage of the Demeter. Oh, yeah? And I really, you know, and I, you know, I don't care about reviews. It's like, who cares what we have to say? I, what's that about? I don't know. It's The Last Voyage of the Demeter. It's the whole, it's like the chapter in Dracula. Oh. But he's coming over on the boat, and he murders everybody on oh, the boat. Oh, okay. I didn't know It was a good, that. like, old-time horror film. Right. But the one I'm actually, and I just really don't, go, that's actually a good question to bring up now. Your opinion and about and I hope they succeed. I never wish ill on any of this. But on these Apple theaters now, where yeah. they serve, they bring you your food. They have, oh, open bar at a movie theater. That's yeah, that's a smart idea. I've seen idea. stuff without. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and for me, like I asked a friend of mine, I just he's like John Adams. I asked him, and I just said your opinion. He goes, and I don't want any distractions at all. And there's going to be all people bringing dinners and stuff down there. Yeah, you're going to have all kinds of weird smells and people that have issues with food. I mean, who knows? It's, and then people probably just talking problems. during it. Yeah, you know, but, be, you know, you know. Let's see how it goes. I think they're trying to make it. They're trying to reach out more to people well, and make it special. They're I, trying to get your living room at the theater, and and you know, I mean, I guess that's a smart idea, but I don't know if practical. In practicality, if it's a good idea, See, I would go more. You know, maybe I'm like a like the Nosferatu thing. Like you go to an old fashioned theater, right? And like or the Eastman, where you go to an old fashioned theater, you might get popcorn, right? Right. You know, I love the Dryden. Yeah. Yeah, not like the old days. Like we go to the theater and throw juju bees. Yeah. The, I, I'll the, tell you that that Riviera theater I went to to see John Waite. That was a great show. Last week, and uh, boy, that's a cool theater. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. missing you at all, though. If you no, show no. Up. <laughs> oh, you my baby God. songs? He did. He did uh, Midnight Rendezvous and uh, Isn't It Time? Whatever that one is, and uh, the slow one, the slower one, and uh, he didn't do any bad English stuff that I know. And he did some new stuff, and I bought. Oh, he a did di- it in good English. Yeah. <laughs> no, no pigeon English. It was um, I bought one of his CDs because I was looking at it, and it was a different one. I didn't want. I wanted something newer, so I bought it. I put it on the other night, and uh, very good. But you can tell he went to Nashville. It's got that Nashville sound. It's just it's a nice, easy going, middle of the road, rocky, but it's kind of like a John Mayer, you know. Not acoustic, not a super electric, but just nice with drums and stuff. But it's definitely got the Nashville polish on it. See, it's good. I could be completely wrong, too, as I usually am on the show. But I think that's something that would bring people in, not just the act, but the ambiance of a theater like that. And I know I've oh, heard about great. this from Chuck and Jeremy from the beginning, obviously. Yeah. And Drumroll Sushi opens up on New Year's Eve. Yeah. I'll be, I will, unless it's a 
blizzard, I will be going down. The yeah, JPP's down. plan. And then I'm going to get out of there like that because it's New Year's Eve. If you get a chance, folks, go to Geneseo and see the G- John Payton project because that, that'll be a fun show. Yeah, and obviously, like, the weather. It's not, like, I keep telling myself, it's not that far of a drive. Not all. really. It's just, I think people worry about, well, if I get drunk, well, then don't get drunk. I mean, what can you do? You know, you just got to pace yourself. But, you know, it's funny. When I went to that hooch nanny thing to see the struts, those people from uh, Drumroll had a tent. And I got a couple of their I stickers. I heard all about it. It's going to be and, awesome. And they were talking about how they're going to have music and stuff. And I, I was telling all the bands I'm in, and you should probably look into this. And then they're gonna they have to take it from there because I'm you know yeah ask me I mean I know all the people who run it I mean a lot of people don't oh I don't want to drive that far well then you know you want to expand your well, fan base thing, or don't like you I said I told yeah. Adriana and Adriana quite the trooper it's like this is why now how do you know you but you mean you drum so it's a little different like, you're a little different but literally like, <laughs> like at the South Wedge thing last week so we went out there her and Chris are playing oh. first hour was okay. Then the temperature went like that. Oh, so yeah. literally, she's like doing "I'm your man." Yeah. She just sticks her hands in her pockets and hits Chris Blake's bass. And I was telling them, I have seen people play with fingerless gloves, and I just said, "But obviously, I'm not the musician." Where was this? This was actually this is how I found out the thing was happening at the Cub Room next week, where they're stealing Greg from me. Yeah, it was because I parked on Clinton. They have the South Wedge. It's a Wonderful Life in the South Wedge. Uh, I was talking a little about it last week because Marilla has her shop there. It wasn't even that cold though this week. It was. It was last uh, last week. Oh, last week. Last week, and it was all icy and rainy. Yeah, and it was jammed though. I was going to park on Gregory Street. You couldn't park anywhere. Well, what does that tell you? People don't give a crap about weather. They just want to go out. Oh, it sucks. It sucks when I want to park, though. So literally, right. I went around. I drove around in circles. I ended up by Alexander. I'm like, I had to find, you know, and I'm looking at the signs. There's all these, like, so I parked by the club room. And that's actually not a far, I mean, I don't mind walking. It's not a far walk at right. all. You don't get warmed up. And there's, like, you know, they had Santa, a choir and everything. Uh. everybody But it just got really by, like, three Boy, you hear about all these things. I don't even hear about half this stuff. Adriana did some Christmas songs. Well, you're busy playing. Yeah. And it's a nice event. You know what I bet it is, too, is I bet the people who go there live, well, they can't live around if they drove in. But it's probably something people mark on their calendar every year. Right. I did one gig, winter gig, down at Sherlock Beach in the pavilion there. And it was like, it was cold, man. I had to wear gloves playing. It was but See, it was like, fun. But I won. But I have seen guitarists who I think Litvak did that when he played it for a Hulse. Oh. Know, they'd have to check how to do it themselves. But like she had her winter coat on. <laughs> she sung some Christmas like songs. Like the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I actually made the thing. I said you're playing on Apple Corps roof. <laughs> you know, you had like people come by. <laughs> I read somewhere where there was a lot of those guys like George and John. They were wearing their wives' coats. They were like <laughs> women's coats, the furry things. So one mm-hmm. other thing about the Beatles, though, I could say, like, you know, I hope it's many, many years before Paul and Ringo passed, but the way those characters were, I could see, like, they did a whole full album, like, three or four in the 70s. Right. It's, it's called Surprise. Yeah. Because so oh, you yeah. hear so many different stories, and the only ones who know it are them. Right. You know, like Paul said, we were all, like, in the 60s. If you were there, you don't remember it. Right. I mean, you know, they probably did a lot of stuff, but they were smart enough to... No one to stop. You know, we're like, I know there was animosity between Paul and George for a long time. And then they seemed like they made up. But like John would say, you always thought him and Paul were close. I think so, yeah. I mean, from what I know. I mean, I, I, I've i seen some of that Ringo stuff with him and Keith Moon and Nilsson. And, you know, they, those guys were out of their minds. Could you then, imagine, uh, like, you you own a pub, and one night you see Bonham and Moon right. dressed as pirates with, like, all these guys coming? It had to be the day, man, when you could just do whatever the hell you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, drive cars in a swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, here's the record company. Yeah, just take this shit yeah, out yeah. the whole way. Call they, my accountant. They just don't have to get banned from all these hotels. <laughs> right. 
Because that's what, like, Ian McCloggan told me. It's like, he said the faces were the first band to get thrown out of the Holiday Inn chain. <laughs> and then he told me, and I heard this, because I, it's, isn't it great when you can go to first source material? You're right. So that's Ian McCloggan's awesome. in town, he sort of knew me a little. From the, so I go to the Bob shop the next day, he's there, and I go, can I ask you a question? I go, Rod, Rod Stewart sent in his book, Faces were the first band to get kicked out of, then you went as Fleetwood Mac. And he goes, no, Rod's got that wrong. <laughs> he goes, no, yeah, they kicked it. He goes, well, I don't know. I still threw a out the window. Felt like it. No, they love me now. That's a good book. I'd like to read that. Oh, I'll let you borrow it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, but the only thing, but the thing is, he goes, no, we, we, that's, you know, Rod's wrong. We started his family. We got them kicked out. <laughs> then we got, <laughs> you imagine you go to, but not Fleetwood Mac. Um, Actually, Rod Stewart's book really good, too. I was surprised. Yeah, he's had a lot of history, man. You know, he's been around. But he's like really the way he does it too. Like he wrote it himself. He's got like a really fun style. Yeah. He talks about one of the things that he collect. He, he's a model train guy. He has oh, a whole wow. thing at his house. Well, you have to have outside interests, or you'll lose your mind. But you know, the one thing I mean, I have very limited touring experience. I'll be honest. I've had I did like three or four years <clears throat> between different show bands and you know cover bands, but. The Indonesian incident that I, we'll never let you forget. I, I really enjoyed... The hotel thing did not bother me. I mean, I like hotels. I, it's fun to hang out in them. It's like they got gyms, they got a pool, they oh, got I used to whirlpools. I mean, it's not that rough a life, you know? No, when I used to travel a lot more, like when I, we, like especially some of the longers from work, you go half the way. Yeah. But the, the worst one was there was a Red Roof Inn in the town in Ohio. There, There's like bullet holes in the wall. Right, right. Oh, yeah, there's definitely low-budget joints. And then low we saw joints. prostitutes going up. The, and the, so the manager calls us. like, why did you call us at like, this time of night? It's like, okay, he's talking. To, you okay, you want anything you want? Anything you want? Yeah. And I feel, it's like, so literally, we do the job, we get back, check, get the hell out. Right. <laughs> well, I, it's funny you say that because I was in a show band and we stayed in some place in North Carolina, I think it was. And it was strange, and there were there were strippers all over the place in this motel, and one one lady gave us a little show with the bearskin rug, and it, it was quite quite entertaining. Uh, that was my life. that was my Hamburg uh, experience. <laughs> I would love, and I haven't found it yet. Is like there's the one photo of them in Hamburg where like I think it's John who's like got a toilet seat around, yeah, right, and all hammered. You know, they, they booted George. I actually watched Backbeat again this year about Astrid and about the Beatles. I never saw that. It's a good movie. Yeah. You know, and Stuart Sutcliffe really couldn't play or anything. No, right. He looked cool, though. Yeah, that was the thing. But I was actually thinking about how do you feel, like, actually, Michaela's in town this week, and I spent some time with her and everything. It's just I was thinking, like, neighbor, I was talking to Josh and Sam yesterday, and I'm thinking, okay, like, I remember, like, over ten years ago how... You know, I've seen them grow as artists, and I've also, like, now, like, Mikhail is touring all over the place. Is she I, from here? Yeah, she's from Penfield. She lives oh. in Hudson, okay. Hudson Valley now. And I met her, like, over 10 years ago. She, she was opening for My Plastic Son. Oh, wow. And I remember her mom comes up to you, oh, she'll sign the CD for you. <laughs> That's nice. That's <laughs> so cool. I have the CD nobody knows about, like, with her in red ink. Very but, good. Yeah, but we actually hit it off, like, right away. But the thing, like, they tour all the time. And I remember, this was years ago, she told me one time, her and a friend, when they were touring, they drove 24 hours between them from Winnipeg to Minnesota. Yeah, I've done that. And we're I, not there, but... I, I love that stuff, though, like, when you're younger. And I was telling Alex Cote, I'm like, you know, at your age, it's great. I don't want to do it now. But I used to right. road trip all the time. I mean, touring is kind of what you make it. I mean, I had a fairly good experience only because the agent we had was a smart guy and he'd have us a couple of weeks in a place and then we'd do the big drive and then a couple of weeks in a place. So, you know, you weren't like, you weren't one nighter after one night. It wasn't like pro wrestling. No. Because that's the one thing that got me, like, ever about, like, loving pro wrestling as a kid. You know, you think about going to be a great, great bad guy tag team. Right. You know, but the thing is, you literally could be like a hundred days on the road. Oh, and yeah. Then you get in your car. You get paid like 25 bucks at some places in the old days and go. That's why, like, a lot of guys like old the Anderson Drillers, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Right. They had it great because. Down, like, in the mid-Atlantic, Ole Anderson said, you know, they made great money, 
you be, you could sleep at home at night. Wow. Because it was so close. Yeah, like, that's before, cool. You know, that's why they didn't really leave the territory. Right, right. Well, that's the good thing about doing stuff in New York City because it's, it's fairly close. The only thing, when you toured, you didn't have like a, like a private plane like Zeppelin and you just stopped down, partied for two weeks. Right. <laughs> you know, well, that's what they would do. They'd stick in a... They loved L.A., too. That was there. I'll bet. But how, this is another thing, talking to them. How do you feel like you've gone from when you started playing till now? Do you feel like an improvement? Do you know a lot more? Are you older and wiser? Or are you just the same old drummer? <laughs> no, I've learned a lot. I, I've learned to expand my style. I, I learned a lot about, you know, learning stuff quickly. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've seen what not to do, and I've... You know, I realize that you have to pick your battles as far as like, getting upset about things, and you know, you know, there's not, there's no reason to start a fight in a band over something stupid that leads to the band, you know, breaking up or something. I mean, because at this point in my life, I don't need to be bouncing around too much. I'd like to have a band, you know, get on, get out of, get out of track, and you know, keep going keep moving forward, you know, instead of just trying to start over all the time. Yeah, I don't want to see us turn into Simon and Garfunkel or the Everly Brothers. Right. <laughs> but some people argue over really stupid stuff. No, I've stuff. Done, like, I have, like, that would happen with some friends years ago. Like, one of my friends said, like, he he broke up with somebody because she went crazy about him using too many napkins. <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. But I'm kind of like when you get older and we've had our health issues, right. you realize it's like life's too short. Like, why sweat the stupid crap right. about everything or just, you know, social media is not a help. No. You know? And it's like I said last week with Steve, um, you know, not being too big of a gossip and just trying to keep 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 the peace with everybody. I mean, if somebody else doesn't like somebody in their band, I don't have to hate them. You know, if I like them, then I don't care what they're what those guys in his band think or her band. You know, I mean that's their opinion. And oh, if they can't, yeah. if there's if there's personality clashes, I know I don't. I know I get along with who I get along with. Oh, I you know you have to just keep in mind what Roger Daltrey said in his book about Pete Townsend. What's that? Working with Pete Townsend was like walking through a minefield wearing clown shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but see now they they get along fine now. Yeah. But like for a while, Keith Moon and Entwistle so wanted to leave and join the Beach Boys because they got sick of the fighting. Right. Well, you know, and then before the show we were talking about. Um, you know, alcohol use and things. And it's like, people don't realize it's not just about getting drunk. It's the after effects and what it does to your personality and how you can be irritable and irascible and and contrary. And, you know, it does a lot of weird things to people depending on the, what personality you have to start with. Yeah, and there was you one know? like... Like the last bar I hung around, it was a great place, but there's one guy who came in, the guy was a sweetheart, but you... Hope like came in. He came, said hi. If he would like turn like this all of a sudden, right? Oh yeah, be, that like, happens. Psychotic. Mm -hmm. But one thing I did want to talk about too is, well, we supposedly had the final show for Kiss, <laughs> and uh, supposedly. But what do you? How do you feel about? There's been the meet the thing going around. I put it on Facebook too. What how they're going to have a sock puppet show? Ah. But they're having now. They're doing AI avatars, right? It, you know, there's a meme, there's one going around, Brian Pete, uh, Litvak's drummer put it up there where it's like there's this show Peter and Ace going, it's not rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. I saw some really cool, there's a, there's a new version of Thunderbirds on, I think it's on the Roku channel, one of those channels, anyway, um, and it's all like the Pixar-ish type 3D, and uh, it's really good, it's, it, they're good stories, and they're, you know, they're a little bit more youthful, obviously, but the dialogue is good. It's the, it's not stupid. And I've watched about six or seven of them and they're, they're really good. You know good. what you like? You'd like they did for Godzilla some AI shorts. They have one versus Guy King Gigan oh, yeah. and one versus Megalodon. Oh, wow. And they're just like 12 minutes long. That's what they are. They're like the AI. Oh, they're really good. I'll have to check those out. But I, I saw know. Ultraman, the new Ultraman movie. I have never watched any of those. No, Mike Murray. I think Mike Murray watches them. I might be yeah. wrong, but I think he does. I'll have to watch I've them. never really seen them. I used to think of Jet Jaguar. But this movie, it starts out great, and then like the last half hour is so-so. Yeah, there's a bunch of them on, on uh, 
the streaming channels. I, I haven't watched any of them. I used to. I had a character when I was drawing back in school. I called him Ultraman. Wish I still had him. I could have made some money. I was thinking <laughs> about actually. I was thinking about like we used to die. Did you ever make any special cookies at your house when you were a kid? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> My mom probably did. I mean, I. Well, we would do, you know, you get the color dye and you do, like, the cutouts. Right. And all I was thinking of, you get it on your hands, you know, you have to get the dough, green, right. red, whatever. I'm thinking I'm going to turn into that character 3D man from the Marvel comics <laughs> because of uh, all the dye. All the stuff we used to eat and yeah, everything oh my God. probably glowing from Hostess twins. You know, I remember when I was on a bowling team and I was a, I was in a teen league. Um, at North Park Lanes, which is no I, longer I know, there. I remember. I heard the name, though. Where Pep Boys is now, at <laughs> Hudson and Ridge. Anyway, uh, so I was in this bowling t- You know, it was like Saturdays. And we we thought nothing of getting French fries on, at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. But I remember eating those Slim Jims back in the day. And I remember if you, if you squeezed them... This weird yellow stuff would come out, <laughs> and it's like, and I started thinking about like, what is that, and why am I eating it? <laughs> you know, it's terrible. Because actually, there's this routine Steve Martin does about McDonald's, yeah, where he goes, if you work there, I have the story in the back. They have a vat with the stuff. <laughs> you, you squeeze it out, milkshake, yeah, Big Mac, order of fries. Yeah, I think so sometimes. I'd say the last Slim Jim I had, maybe it did have that stuff because it was really, really hot. Yeah, but that's amazing how those things are still around. There's all kinds of beef jerky stuff out now. And oh, you can find tons. Some of yeah. it looks like, I know, like one of my relatives buys it for their dogs. It tells right. You, what <laughs> you know. But I don't, I really don't go to movies anymore except for like Nosferatu, which is really cool. And uh, and actually, the, in the last voyage of the Demeter, that's what he looks like. Oh, yeah. Lot, but I am like... As soon as it comes out on DVD, I'm going to buy that Godzilla Minus One. Uh, i got to still watch a bunch that I bought. I bought a season of that show, Vikings. I like I it. i got to watch that, and i got to watch... Uh, I bought the first season of The Monsters, because I found that cheap. And, uh, I'm surprised you didn't just get the whole, like... Well, that was the only one they had. Oh, because I got the whole... Oh, do you? If I remember in those days, like, that ran, like, 72 episodes for Oh, I know. Years. It was crazy. And you know what happened to it? It got it started taking you the ratings because it went up against a new show called Batman. Uh, but they were huge. Uh, you forget, like in those days, a lot of these shows they started red hot. It went like it was like phenomenon. Right. Yeah, and that car was awesome. <coughs> Dragula. Yeah. Rob Zombie would write a song about it. <laughs> that car was the best. The thing to pay attention to, and I didn't realize this until doing a little reading on them, was watch the. Series, I guess the second year it was more slapstick and bra- vaudeville type right. stuff. Right. Oh, I have to watch. Oh, yeah. you have to sort of pay attention and yeah. like the difference in tone. I'll tell you, man. Nobody realizes, or I didn't, at least when I was a kid, that Yvonne DiCarlo used to be one hot Ten Commandments forties movie star, forties and fifties. Yeah, she was something. And I like the Rob Zombie monster movie. The heck with everybody. I think it's actually. I didn't see it. You know, it's just, what do you expect? You want uh, War and Peace or something? I know. It's, it's, a freak, it's like a cartoon. Yeah. The color palettes are awesome. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. You know I what? Never... It's not like, what do you I mean, What do you expect when you... you know? I don't know what people expect half the time. I, I think honestly. more people now, I think, just to get clicks. Something's making my nose itch in the studio today. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, who knows around here who we've had? Where's your assistant with the nose itcher thing? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't bring in the nose scratcher, please. Don't give me ideas. <laughs> don't give me ideas. But I think people just for clicks, you know, if you're looking around, you want like the internet people. Oh, this movie was great. No, everybody's got to say this sucks or this is. Yeah, well, trolls. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of trolls around. No, and they just want like. You know, all negativity, though. Well, some people just want to be contrary. That's what I was... Well, I am you know. like that, too, a little, but... But you also get people like, you know, for someone like me, when you see them talk about comic books, you realize they don't know one thing about comic books. Right. I mean, from what I used to... When I used to read them, oh, my there God, it's it like... Did I ever tell you... Uh, there, wow. <laughs> What's in here today? Did I ever tell you I have one of those... Uh, VHS tapes of 
the '60s Marvel cartoons. Oh, those are awesome! Where they just Captain did the America panels, mighty and, shield. It, and it was just like the they just took panels from the comic book, and 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 hardly there was hardly any animation, and, it, and it's they were pretty interesting. I'm actually really on a kick like that because I get, got out of the library first volume of Neil Adams. Oh yeah, Raven the Bold, and not only the artwork, but what got me is like this quality of the storytelling. Is that graphic novel or comic? Book? It's just it's they collected all his work. Oh, and they're in volumes. This okay, is Raven the Bold. Okay, but what got now, me that movie's coming out next year. Oh, finally. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I actually want to see Blue Beetle. Yeah, me too. I gotta it looks watch fun. that. Yeah. But what really got me, not only the artwork, just like the quality of stories in here. Batman's not like the mean old grumpy. Right. But there's one really good story that involves why are they on different sides when it's got Superman and Batgirl and Batman and Supergirl? Why are they going to fight? Right. Now, this is like a great story where the guy, there's a guy, he comes down, it turns out at the beginning they show this guy, he's like an actor, but he's just like this inventor. And he, he figures out, like, he does voice patterns and finds out their identities. So that's like the prologue. Oh. What happens then is Superman, an alien comes to Superman and says, I'm on the run from my planet. Oh, wow. From all these villains. He's like, I'll hide you in the forces of solitude. Then this alien comes to Beth and it goes, oh, I'm a intergalactic police. That guy's a criminal. <laughs> so they go, and then there's, like, Robin and a... It's like Robin and someone else back at the cave, and they they turn they turn on a TV. The forces of Southern. No, we must tell Batman. They get gassed. <laughs> it turns out. So it turns out. So then they're fighting Batman and Superman. And Super Batman wears kryptonite gloves. The reveal is it's not aliens. It's a it's that actor, and he found that he was dying. Oh, wow. He wanted to play his greatest roles, but they knew. So they played along to give him a treat. Oh, wow. So they were just faking it. Not That's a telling. great story. But that was like the story was, or the reveals, and I'm just going, the creativity's not there anymore. Right. There's no, like, violence or anything. There's no... I'm not really a big fan, because, like, last time I went to Ollie's, I bought a few things just to buy them, because they were, like, four bucks each, graphic novel. I knew that, too. Because they were part one through seven, so I bought, like, two or three. I bought the beginning and the end, just to sort of... But anyway... <laughs> You know, some of it, are, some of them are good, but I'm not real crazy about some of the artwork now. It just looks like it's very sketchy and thin looking. I don't know. It's hard now, to explain. I'm actually, honestly, like with you, I mean, obviously, my friend Kaylin, love you, Kaylin, her stuff's great, and she's actually done some covers for Wonder Woman now. It's, yeah. But uh, I've gotten some just like out of the library, like some new stories, and the art is to me, it's like, what is this? It looks like they didn't finish it. It's you know. Good old Tony from Empire Comics used to use the term scribble books. Right. That's what it looks like. I mean, I don't know. Plus, the, the, there's a new sort of thing now where they're they're taking a whole page or two pages and making one or two big panels and no no dialogue. You know, it's supposed to be effective, but it's like, but it's almost like what you, people can't read. You, you can't. You know, Actually, you don't want to. <laughs> Don Blair got me going just on Facebook. He gave me the opportunity because he put up some stuff for Jack Kirby. So yeah. I went on this whole. <laughs> Yeah, he's a Marvel guy for sure. Yeah, he, I mean I'm both. I mean I love like I think D, you know DC in the seventies is really good. But spe- speaking of Don Blair, I was just doing a recording thing with him and Susie and Jeff Galino yesterday. We're putting out some of Jeff's tunes and using a couple of my tunes and some of Don's stuff. So we're look forward to that in next year or so. We'll be having some music to come think out. Think about it though. Next year already. Yeah. I'm, you know what hit me the last couple of days? I go. I had a dentist appointment the first week of January. <laughs> hey, there you and go. No, no, it's like weird when you get older, though, and it's like you see time go. And I, when I said when I was at my dentist in the summer, they're like, well, this is next year already. Like, before we know it, it'll be, uh, right. you know, the years go faster. Nothing, like, nothing like starting the year off with some good pain. Well, what I hate, <laughs> like a couple of years ago, it's great. The holidays, you gain weight, you try to relax. Yeah. I had my cardiologist, I would my love doctor, put the first, <laughs> you have some of this, I go lose it. <laughs> whatever, weight, whatever weight you lost, I found. That's right. But I had my cardiology and my, my physical right like three days into January. Oh, and man. I told him at the doctor's office, it should be illegal to make appointments for this the first right. week of January. Well, I just had mine. For the end of the year, so I didn't look pretty good. But yeah, you know, it's hard to look forward to those things sometimes. No, they're a joke too. I mean, these days. Yeah, 
Five. So, you're not dead. Okay, I'll see you in a, six months. <laughs> you know? Oh, well, you have six months to live. <laughs> Doctor, I can't pay my bill. I'll give you another six months. <laughs> ah, good one. <laughs> no, but what do you think of Jack Kirby? Who was your favorite I love Jack artist? Kirby. I watched a good documentary on him and Marvel, I think it was. But I think it was mainly about him. He was a war guy. World War II guy. And uh, he, he started coming out with all that stuff in the late 40s. I, I like his style, and then DC incorporated him with those uh, miracle, you know, Mr. Miracle, the, world, and the new these, gods, and all that stuff. And Commandy, Commandy was awesome. Yeah, I like that stuff a lot. And, and remember, like Dark Side now is like still one of the main right. characters. My, and why it's Rochester? He's kind of like Galactus, but you know, yeah, Rochester again. Why don't you do more with Joe Simon being born here? Oh yeah, really? Why you could have a Captain America Day? You could yeah. Do, because that would be like uh, Siegel and Schuster, like in Cleveland. No, I'm they're... looking for the word. That would be patriotic. You can't do that. <laughs> no, I don't know. That would be a good idea. I mean, I'm surprised. Like nobody's really. They don't even have like they could have like a something every year, like a little Joe Simon fest. Yeah, that's a good idea. I didn't. Even, I forgot he was born here. But nobody does anything about it. I don't know why. For that was strange. Well, maybe we'll have to get on the bandwagon and. Uh, Push for that. But the thing, the only thing about Kirby is like those panels is bursting. Yeah. And it's sad how like the whole acrimony with Stan Lee and how right. You know who did what or yeah. But I, I mean, that is one thing. I don't think he would have been good for Spider Man as an artist. No. Because Spider Man had to be like this wimpy kid. Well, yeah, his characters tend to be very blocky looking. Yeah, like yeah. Ben Group's clever yeah. type, He's, or like I those mean, cosmic drawings, like yeah. Galactus and everything. Right, and the Silver Surfer. Which, my, that was the first comic I ever read, because my mom was a Silver Surfer fan, was the one was one of the Silver Surfer comics. Yep. It was the first Good comic stuff. I ever read. And I'll tell you, man, I watched, I bought two, forgot where I found them, at, one of the, at the discount stores, but I found the Fantastic... Discount stores are your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I found the two, you know, Fantastic Four movies, the ones with Jessica Alba and that. And they were uh, the extended versions. And they were much better than what, like as usual, much better than what you saw in the theater. Because in the one movie, I forget which one, again, sorry, but there was this, they had a lot bigger storyline about Ben and Alicia. About how he was, you know, he, he's struggling with her and trying to, you know, his feelings for her and they were talking you know in the in the one movie they kind of introduced her and then, you know you didn't see her too much but as usually with the case I bought a Daredevil like that too a director's cut it was so awesome. much better I heard that so was great I it think. was way better way better the one I would like to find would be the Avengers this is not this is the Steed and Peel one with Ray Fiennes and Uma Thurman yeah where they said they cut it down for summertime viewing right and I don't think it's a horrible movie I watched it when it came out and I never watched it again and I probably should give it another chance but I saw it on, it's on one it, of the streaming it's weird things. though it's not it's, but it seems like for a short movie it drags yeah like it's longer but I heard like the real cuts a lot better but they cut it like I said to make it like a summer movie right Hey, Sean Connery plays a villain in it. What do you want? Yeah, they make a lot of mistakes. They they assume what people want. Oh, people aren't going to want to do this. Or aren't going to want to sit through this. Oh, people aren't going to understand. Oh, people, why don't you let the people see it and then just figure it out? Sometimes you know? I'm just in the mood for a long movie, too. Yeah. Or, like, if it's a good long movie, you get invested in it. Right. I mean, that's the nice thing about owning a movie or streaming it. You know, then you can always come back to it. But I tend to... When I watch a long movie like that, I'll I'll get to a pivotal spot, then I'll stop it, and then I'll come back, so I'm not really missing anything. Well, you'll like Vikings, though, and the thing you might enjoy is actually going with the historical, because a lot of these characters are real. Oh, yeah. But, like, Floki was real. The guy, you'll see, the guy's a total lunatic. <laughs> he was real, but... Ragnar, nobody really knows. It's like I, that's what I love about some of these historical figures. Now they know he existed because he had sons, oh. but they don't really know anything about him. It's like William Tell; they don't even know if he existed or not. Wow. No, but it's like, it's, it's actually a nasty show too. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. That was not fun medieval times. No, but it was a good show and everything. It was, but it's actually, once you get into it, you'll get really invested in it. I'll probably want to buy the rest of them. That was Big Lots had those. It took forever, though, to get the last season out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, somebody told me about that show and said it was really good. 
So we, as usual, we're not talking about anything holiday related. But I have one of my good stories I've told all these years about this is like the true spirit of the holidays. This was like many, many years ago. There was a beater played a gig at the Crown on Thanksgiving Eve. I think I played Christmas night at the Abilene one time with with Anonymous Wilpon. I think a lot of times, like the old, I remember when I worked at bars, the old saying was, you know, people after they want to get out drink after dealing with their family all right. year. It's a lot of them want to do that. Yeah. But but now a lot of them, you know, bless them. I mean, there are people who own these places. You know, take the day off. Give a day off. Yeah, I mean, off. I love the holidays. I get a little tired of the, you know, everybody wants a donation and everybody wants, you know, and I, I'm at that point where I just don't have a lot of loose money around and I don't mind throwing a, a box of foods and things together, you know, for, but you know, it's just every time you turn around, somebody wants you know, something. No, after furnace gate, I really can't be very generous. So. What's that? So, about a month ago, it's like, it's kind of cold in here. <laughs> look at the thermostat. It's like... Furnace gate? <laughs> and I, yeah, I look at the thermostat, and it's like 10 degrees under, and I'm just one of those, I'm like, ah, whatever. You know, it's the day. It's, I'll be okay. Next day, it's cold in there. <laughs> The next day, it's really cold. <laughs> so, actually, credit to I. So, I go downstairs, and I look, and I go, well, this filter's crap. I'm going to have to replace this 15 bucks, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm going, it's not firing. I could know enough like that. So, I call Isaac, and I got to give credit to Isaac. If you need furnace, they'll come out in the middle of the night. Yeah. Like, they, they have enough, they do enough volume, and they have a shop open 24-7. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're and good. So, they, you know, they give me, they'll send somebody between 3 and 6, like, great i have nothing else to do today (laughs) so literally the guy comes about 20 after three yeah very professional goes down there they do a scan right off the bat you know they they said oh this smells in case there's gas there i just changed my filters it took a while but i finally got oh getting that one out that was tough so he comes upstairs and he's like well it's not fire this guy was really good he would do the explain yeah. So, but now we're getting to the, okay, the first, just for the scan, it's 109. So, okay. yeah. now, comes upstairs. Well, it's not firing. We'll just get it restarted. This will cost about 200 more. Yeah. So, he goes downstairs. And then, you hear the walk up the stairs that you just don't want to hear. Right. And he comes up and goes, I've never seen this happen before. Oh, boy. <laughs> like, oh, great. So, a fairly new model, right? It's all computer run. The computer just decided to go bananas. Went all hell on me. Wow. It just went like it went like a two, 2001 me. It wasn't working. <clears throat> That's something I always... I'm very concerned about automation getting going too far. So he goes, you know, I've never seen this before, but I think I know what might help. And he said, okay, it's like a 45-minute round trip. I'm going to go to the shop and I'm going to get a new computer. Oh, boy. So, so he goes, he comes back, goes down there. He's like, can I hear the walk up the stairs? Can I look at the face? So they go. He goes, I think we might be in the right direction. It's still not firing. Yeah, well, my girlfriend just got him. We were at that Riverworks thing in Buffalo last week after the John Waite thing, and one of the gutter places had a kiosk, and... So she put her name and address down, and some guy called her, and she went, and she bought gutters. But they're the leaf filter things. But it's big money. So then, she's got a lot of, lot of square He actually brought footage. some other parts to change. Then finally we had success. And when we had success, I'm not donating to the charities. I have a couple I always try to give to, you know, little. Yeah. But, you know, plus I actually had one with the Salvation Army when my dad was alive. Yeah. And politics aside, okay, you donate to who you want. The person was so rude to us. Right. It's like pick people who aren't going to be like that because that's the way to turn. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I a lot of times I like to give a little something. You know, it's just hard to do with everybody, and you're constantly are no getting prisons? stuff in are the they mail. No workhouses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always getting stuff in the mail, and and all, and then you start feeling guilty if you don't do it. So. Yeah, but that whole story to finish the story, so Beater's playing. It's like one of those beautiful nights, like snow's falling, and then I just, you know, I have that weird thought process where I go, I'm going to pig out on Thanksgiving. I might as well get a plate. <laughs> <laughs> I go down. It's packed. Literally packed. Where is this? Tahoe. Oh. You know, on, on Gates, right? So I yeah. go in there. So there's a woman next to me and she just goes like, Merry Christmas. I'm like, Merry Christmas. Like, isn't that, I just thought in my head from it, isn't that nice? Yeah. Then all of a sudden she goes, are you alone? <clears throat> 
Wiley <laughs> Avenue. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, oh. and the other end of going, okay, this is like a Tom Waits song I'm falling uh, into. Right, right. Having a garbage plate on Thanksgiving Eve with a hooker. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and the other <laughs> funny one was one time at Blue Room. I was there, it was like a Christmas Eve. A couple of my friends were hanging out. It was like the cast of a Damon Runyon play story was coming in. All these weirdos would come in. All these, like, hobos and oh, stuff. Oh, man, yeah. And it was like, are we in a Damon Runyon story? Literally, I, <laughs> then I'm leaving. There's a guy passed out on his... Because in the blue yeah. room, you go upstairs. Guy passed out in the stairwell. Leave us to leave this fine establishment. <laughs> you know, it was, a, it was all these Tom Waits songs and right. everything. But, I mean, like, for Christmas, you've done you do Christmas gigs. You're actually doing one next week. Yeah, the Cub Room, the Christmas brunch, the whiskey brunch with Tommy Burnett and, and company. Because it's night somewhere in the world. Yeah, it's yeah. always fun, though. People, It's a great networking thing. I mean, and then you see a lot of people you haven't seen, and it's people you see every year. And Back in the old days, there was a place I... <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, John's son, Vincent, used to work there. I get, Oh, yeah. I gave up on doing a lot of decorating just because it's too much of a pain. <laughs> no, I have my, the pumpkin's been great this year so far. Uh, the pumpkin's like pumpkin got for Halloween this year is like solid. Yeah, I'll probably do a lot, a little bit of shopping too. I always try to go a couple weeks before Christmas. I just go to a couple stores. Okay, this is good for this person. This is good. For, I don't really have a too much fixed in my head as to what to buy. Yeah, I thought, like, for the end of the year, too. Like, when you started doing this, has it been what you expected? What? Freaking show, dude. <laughs> this the podcast. show? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's fun. I, I I met a lot of people I would never have known. And, and You will uh, next year, too. I, I learned a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, I learned a lot about a lot of different subjects, and I think it's cool to try to, like... Well, how am I? What am I going to talk about to this person? Because I'm not like the when you guys do the wrestling thing, I just kind of sit and listen, and I and I, I know I don't want to act like I know it all about wrestling because I don't know that much. But I think it's cool what you guys talk about. Then I pick up on it, and then I learn. Well, one I want to do next. Prepare yourself for next year because one I want to do. I want to reach out to Rochester City Ballet and oh. talk about ballet. Why not? I don't know if we could get an hour show out of that. I mean, we got one out of Rochester Burlesque, but that was a little different. Burlake, ballet keeps you on your toes. Oh. oh. <laughs> But, I mean, I thought I've, I've gone to those every year. I, I'm not going to the Nutcracker this year. I'm going to Jiva this year because I've done it so much. But I thought that would be interesting to ask about, like, especially, like, all the work you have to put into it. Yeah. Maybe that you can demonstrate doing, like, Swan Lake or something. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> you know, or anything else. You know, we're going to have, like, you know, our usual musical guests. And I've actually really enjoyed hearing the history of Rochester music lately. Like, yeah. Some of the shows. Like, I didn't know about the Centurion. Was it? it was a club. That club. Yeah. Now Joe, now Joe, when he was on here, said it was like another one of our good old mob owned clubs. Well, I think that was the same. Yeah, that was the place I was talking about last week. I think it was Steve. Yeah. But I'd never heard of that one. That was yeah. the one that went through the. Well, track. it's not there anymore. It's a, it was across from Bausch and Lam or on Goodman there. Yeah, that's what I heard. But actually, one of the books I read, I really just finished it, uh, Don Rickles' biography. Oh yeah. And the thing about him is, he was boring. He was like a normal dude. Right. You know, an actually super nice guy. And they said he got grandfathered with political correctness. Because, oh, boy. But the thing was, reading about the old scene, the nightclubs. Stand up and stuff. All this stuff, like with all the Rat Pack. Oh, yeah. But I guess the moment, I guess it's been told many times, 1958, Rickles was playing. And they keep saying it was a Copacabana. It was like another place. They think it was a place in Miami, though. Sinatra came in. Oh, wow. They said Sinatra could be really moody. Right. You know, he could, you know he's just very, like, somebody you didn't mess with. So Rickles goes, hey, Frank, I want to make you feel at home. Beat somebody up. Uh, oh, man. And everybody's like, oh. they waited. Sinatra laughed. Uh -huh. And I guess, like, then he would laugh when Rickles would rag on him, and he was made. Yeah. The only thing he won't do, I guess he came with Ava Gardner one time, his ex, he said, Rickles won't go there. Right. Oh, yeah. I'd say, I used to, Don Rickles used to annoy me, only because, I think it's, I don't know, to me it's cheap 
comedy. To That's just what they say insulting, in the book. They, they call them in, insult comics. They also, know, what a, they did like too was, you know, he's then he go overboard at the end. We gotta love each other. Yeah. Gotta, right. Well, yeah. You know, it was like in short doses. It was, but he, you know, one thing I'll give him credit for, he had lived those whole shows. He was in. This movie, I don't know if you've ever seen it, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes. Yeah. He played a carnival owner in that. Or is it Rod Steiger? No, that's what Ray Milan. Oh, Ray Milan. I got him mixed up. Yep. That's a cool movie. It's, it's cheap as hell. It's like, I think it's a Roger Corman, but it's like, it's interesting. But there's like another sort of like, he had that sort of sense of humor. Like when, when Sinatra died, he was a pallbearer. Oh, yeah? I guess it was a big casket with gardenias on top. And, you know, Rickles was in the early 70s by now. It's like 1998. Right. He said he sort of slouched. And when they put the casket down, he was exhausted. He was he's like, uh, they look at it and he goes, what do you, I've been leaning on Frank for my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but the one, guys, you haven't seen was Innocent Blood. Never the vampire movie with with gangsters. Oh wow! And it's hilarious because like the vampire wants to get this one mobster, and he's got the Italian food. It's like, what? This is garlic. This is good. For you. <laughs> like, and he plays the attorney. Oh wow! It's a funny movie. It's like a comedy done right with right. vampires. With who? Who's in it? It's uh, Annual Par- Anna Parlo, the French actress. Okay. I think Ben Gazar is in it, but oh, like, uh, wow. Robert Loge is the Don. Oh, man. Rick well, Loge. he's perfect for that. Yeah. It's a good movie, though. Yeah, Robert Loge is good. But I like that. But do you have any favorite Christmas movies as we oh, wrap I you up know. I, the North Pole? I always like the old ones, like Bells of St. Mary's. And, and uh, I really like The Bishop's Wife. The Bishop's Wife is a good is a Can good you movie. imagine, though, now, like in the day, the priests were looked at as, you know, people to look up to. Could you imagine, right. you, could, can you imagine where you can make a Bells of St. Mary's now? Yeah, the, I know. It's hard, man. Well, you know. They are going my way. I was going to say they're, they're screwed, they screwed themselves, but that's not quite true. Actually, that <laughs> book. <laughs> that's the, but that book, though, about it rags on Bob Hope in that Rickles book. Oh, yeah? Because it says, like, Rickles ad-libbed everything. He made everything up himself. It said R- Hope never did anything in his life like that. He had all writers. cue cards and yeah. writers and everything. But he fired them off fast. I mean, I've listened to some of that old radio stuff. Boy, and Bob Hope is just... He fires them off no, quick. So you got to realize, like, it turned out, you know, one of the big reveals for the You Bet Your Life, all this stuff was written... Of course it was, yeah. You know, would you think Groucho was just screwing around? Right. But that's that's part of the charm and part of the art is making it look like you just threw it together. Yeah. So I see Santa was like paging you there, so you yeah. have to get to the North Pole. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. So if you heard this going around, uh, what sex are Santa's reindeer? I have no idea. Male or fine? Okay, we're doing only two sexes here. Take a I would imagine they're male. No. <laughs> they're all female. You know why? Why? Pay attention. Okay. Serious. You want to learn something. Okay. Why? Male deers uh, drop their antlers in winter, so they have to be female because they have antlers. Ah. Uh, so how the heck was Donner teaching his kid in that Rudolph movie? Uh, <laughs> no clue. <laughs> but that's supposedly it. Yeah, I never knew that myself, that the male deers dropped the antlers. Uh, so. Me either. So there, the folks take that one home. Oh, and I like the Grinch, the original Grinch, the 60s, I with Boris Karloff. I movie. <laughs> That's actually Alyssa Trahan's, like, her favorite holiday movie. Oh, really? I hate that movie so much and do a sequel. No, the Boris Karloff yeah. one was awesome. That's, that's good that's stuff. That's another one funny meme going around. It's like, maybe if everybody didn't say what a nasty son of a bitch the Grinch was, he might be nicer. Right. <laughs> You are what you believe you are, right? <laughs> no, and I like the whole idea, too, like with Karloff. You know, you have to have all these ex- explanations. Like, maybe his shoes were too tight or his heart was too full. He was just a meanie because he's a meanie. Right. And I always go, he didn't hate Christmas. He hated people. What's so bad about that? <laughs> yeah, people suck. Actually, Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I will text you. You won't be able to see it for a while. <laughs> You're right. I love my phone. I will text you actually a, a picture you'll like, but so it's been very cool this year again, and we're off to another year. That's right. I actually have to do this again without him, but I'll go see him at the cover room afterwards. Yep, yep. Make try to make it there on the seventeenth if you can. After you hear this, and uh, I don't know. And you have anything else coming up for the rest? Of I the got the uh, Brian Lindsay band at Sticky Lips on the sixteenth, and then I got. This Christmas oh, well, thing on the seventeenth. Why do you say that? Because I haven't really seen a lot of gigs going on there. If I've been missing something. Uh, no, he's he's got because bands though, but he charges the cover. I'm not sure how much it is. Probably five bucks or something. 
because actually, I think the last thing I saw there was that band, The Empty Hearts. Right. You know, yeah, I all, saw that show. That, that was, was that was so packed. That was a that great was, show. I had to park by that hotel in the back, and it was all packed. Yeah, I'm not sure how. You know, we'll have to see how we draw. We got to put out the put out the uh, promotion there. No, because I remember they used to have New Year's Eve shows and everything. Yeah. I, I haven't heard that in a long. It's like. Sticky lips for concerts. If for any reason you come to that show, come because I'm going to have a new drum set there. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. debuting a, a, a brand new know. drum set that I bought. But brand now new. we're going to have a very special holiday song at the end by Andy Calabrese and others whose names I forget. <laughs> it's a jazz version of Santa Claus is coming to town. Nice. And dedicated this show to the Baron, too. That's why I said this is. I'm calling this show for Duty and Humanity. That's right. I couldn't think of any good holiday title, basically. Andy and some dudes. Yep. Coming sure. up next. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you next year.